All right, guys, welcome back. <clears throat> this is going to be part 15 of Bubbles. Hopefully, this is the last part. Hopefully, we can get this together, finished up, and um, move on to the next project. Um, so, I have the PCB sitting here. I'm going to put this on first um, just to make it easier when I get over to the cabinet. So, this just slides on. There's a little keyway in there to keep it from going the wrong direction. And once again, this kit came from Arcade Shop. You have to buy this separate from the chips. But um, you order chips, there's 24 of them on the board. He sends you 25, so you get an extra chip in case you bend a leg or maybe it doesn't work for some reason or whatever. Um, you get an extra chip and then you get this part two. And then um, this converts it to run with these newer style chips. So let's go get set up over by the cabinet. We're going to get this back up on the metal board. We're only going to put one screw in it just to test it to make sure that it's working before we screw all the screws into the board in case I need to take it back off for some reason. So let me go get set up over there and I'll be right back. Okay, let's go ahead and get this PCB back onto the metal plate. Like I said, we're just going to put one screw for now. See what happens. So this is the, the 1J1 we're going to plug into this adapter that Arcade Shop made. This is our, we're going to plug this in, it goes right here in the uh, 1J2. And then our monitor plug goes next to that right here. And then we just have to plug in our two ribbon cables. One there. And then we have one down here. Okay, they're all plugged in. Let's make sure the PCB is not... I'm going to put a second screw in there. Just because if this were to maybe be offset and one of the chip legs were to hit the metal plate, it could ground out something. So we are going to put a second screw to keep it square. Okay, so now we have that plugged in. Um, so what we're going to do now is power it on so fingers crossed we are going to get something that we're going to get bubbles on that monitor so let me turn off a couple of these overhead lights just to get a little darker down here so let's turn it on fingers crossed let's see what happens I plugged in plugged in okay Okay, good. We have zero. <coughs> oh boy, that's loud. There's bubbles. And we are missing blue. Come on, monitor. Boy, that red is high. Needs a little bit of time to warm up. Tell you one thing, that volume pot is really, really high. Okay, we have bubbles on the screen. I let it warm up for a minute. I had gotten a phone call, so I had to take the phone call real quick. Um, volume pot's really loud, but we'll... We'll address that afterwards. Um, <clears throat> looks good. Picture actually looks pretty darn good once the monitor warms up a little bit. So that's good. Um, so I think the next step we're going to do is I'm going to put the rest of the screws in the PCB. Um, turn these couple light these lights back on over here. Okay, I'm going to put the um, finish mounting the PCB to the metal plate. And then um, I'm going to get the monitor mounted onto the wooden board so we can slide it into place. Um, I have to take the glass back off in the cabinet because um, i got to put that plastic shroud around the monitor and then put the glass back on. Um, so we'll get that taken care of. Then we can work on putting the coin door back together and soldering all the wires onto the coin door. The um, coin door, I have the original wiring harness still soldered to it. I figured I'll just do one wire at a time, make it a lot quicker and easier for me to just take one wire off, put the next one on. 
so I don't get any of the wires crossed or confused. Now, the Bubbles is missing this, this uh, service switch and bracket. Um, I took this one out of the Stargate cabinet. We're going to put that in this cabinet, and then I'll have to find another one um, to put into the Stargate cabinet. Somebody is making new ones of these. They're on eBay. Um, I think he wants like 50 bucks shipped for them, which I don't know if that's expensive or not. Um, it seems a little high. I'd like to have an original one. If anybody possibly has one of these, they'd want to sell with the bracket and all the switches and everything. I'd uh, be definitely interested in an original one, but if not, I'll have to order that one off of eBay. I'm not in any hurry for it. Um, I'm not ready to start that project yet, but I'm going to see if I can't clean up this sticker. I think somebody remakes these stickers, or I think maybe the artwork's online and I can print one out, put it over top but I'll worry about that later. So at least I have one of these so I can actually get this game completely wrapped up. The only thing this game is missing is the bracket for the volume pot that goes on the wall. So I'm gonna have to probably make a bracket for that. Maybe just use a piece of, um, I could probably make one out of taking one of these other cabinets and using it as a template and um, making a bracket for that. I might do just do that. Um, but other than that, I'm happy it's working. Um, this is the first time it's run. It's only been running for a couple minutes. Um, hopefully, fingers crossed, nothing gets hot or warm and starts screwing up. Um, seems like all the sockets and chips are working on the board, obviously, because I'd have no RAM errors. So that's a good thing. We have zero on the screen, so it's detecting no problems with the RAM. Um, so I think we're good to go. So I'm just going to go ahead and screw the rest of this on off camera. And then I'll come back, we'll get this monitor mounted to the piece of wood. We'll get it slid into the cabinet, um, put our bolts to hold the tray in place. And then um, we'll probably put the back door and stuff on. I'll take all these wires and put them up front where they gotta go to the coin door. Um, and we'll just put the top panel on and everything and kind of just, uh, uh, we'll move around to the other side and put the coin door together and uh, see if the controls work and all that. Right now, this is not on free play, so we're gonna have to get into the settings and put it on free play, but we can't do that until we have this hooked up. I don't feel like touching a bunch of wires together to try to get it to free play. So we'll just wait until we get the switches hooked up and everything. I haven't tested the joystick yet, the buttons or nothing. So that joystick I bought and it was rebuilt. So hopefully that joystick works. And there's no issues with it. I'm still having a problem with the Sinistar joystick where when you go up too far, the ship starts going down. So if you go lightly up, the ship goes up. But if you go all the way up, the ship goes down. But in the down position on Sinistar, if you go all the way with the joystick, it still continues to go down. It's not like it stops and goes the opposite way. So I don't know what's wrong with that. I don't think that's correct, um, but I've never had a Sinistar, an original one, so I don't know for sure. Is it one of those things where you just barely have to push up to get the ship to go but i doubt it i mean i think there's something wrong with it and that's the second joystick i've put in there that's doing it so is it something on the board that's causing that problem is that how it's supposed to be if somebody could send me a message and let me know because i don't know you know how it's supposed to work so if somebody could help me out with that that would be awesome um and it could just be something on the board you know and what board is it is it on the the what do they call it the widget board or whatever the board that the um <clears throat> joystick and buttons go to could it be something on that board that's messed up i'm not sure um but to have two joysticks do it um either a that's how it's supposed to be b there's something wrong with the board i highly doubt that something's wrong with the joysticks at this point so um if somebody can let me know that would be great so all right i'm gonna stop talking stop the video for a couple minutes screw the rest of this pcb in and then we'll get the board and we're gonna get this monitor mounted to it and get it in place. Okay, <clears throat> I have the board here. I still have the monitor up on its side, which I think it might be a little bit easier to get this board mounted to it. This is the back right here. So we have to take our carriage bolts from the back side here and run them through the wood and then they're going to go through the housing of the monitor now um, 
one of these nuts will have a uh, ground wire that has to go to it. So it's one of the back two, which I think it's this side. So we will leave that one loose so that when I put it in place, we can get the monitor or the ground strap onto it. I don't know that you can really see what I'm doing. Such a tight area I'm working in today. A rock was in the bottom of the chassis from when I cleaned it on the gravel back there. Must have been stuck in somewhere. But I'm going to go ahead and put these two on, and then I'll come back and we'll get it slid in place. Okay, now <clears throat> there's actually a ground strap on both sides. So both back nuts need to have the uh, ground strap put around them. <clears throat> so now let's... Uh, get this monitor slid up into here. So I'm gonna take this uh, power wire and just kind of get it out of the way. Stick it on this handle up here. And then you only have the two ground straps. The nice thing about these Williams cabinets is you can slide this right in and then there's a two screw or two holes here and here to put your bolt down. I don't know which one, I think it's actually this one and that one. Because then you could, um, if you need to work on the monitor a little bit, you can slide it back and put one of the bolts through this hole here. And uh, you'll be able to use that little piece of stainless steel up there that's polished to look like a mirror and actually look up at it to see the screen to do your adjustments. So let's get this up into place. Let's slide it in there. And then um, I have these bolts here for it. keep one in my pocket in case it wants to slide back out. That came out of here. I've never had them that tight before. I don't know what it's binding on. I think I know what it is. This carriage bolt was hanging down. That might be it. Okay. We have that slid into place. So now I can take the nut off and put the ground strap on this side and on this side. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'll be back. Okay, yeah, the carriage bolt was dragging a little bit right here because it wasn't all the way recessed up into the wood. So now you can see how it just slides back and forth nice and easy. 
So now this is one of the bolts that hold the monitor in place. Just gotta get that lined up. There's one. These don't need to be super tight. Okay. Now we can route the uh, wire for the uh, video. And there is a loop under here. I'm going to put it on that loop. Come over to this loop, put it around this one, bring it underneath this bar, and it's not long enough. So, why is that? I guess we're not going to be able to go underneath this loop. We'll have to go this way like that. Okay, now it'll be long enough. Um, I should probably loosen these clamps there and there and run the wire into it just to keep it against the wood so it's not flopping like this. So let me do that real quick. Let me stick it behind those clamps and then we'll be back and we'll route the power wire. Okay, that is done. It's in these clamps now. It's nice and routed that way so it's not gonna snag on anything. So now we need to plug in the power and the power wire is really long for this monitor. So I'm going to bring it down the side here. I'm going to loop it through this bottom one. And I might just do a second loop through it. Plug it in. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to put another loop of wire through this down here. There we go. So that's that. This is our power wire for the game. Run it through the slot. So now we're pretty much done back here. So let me go grab the door. I'm going to unplug this cabinet because when I put that upper door on, I don't want to uh, power the game on just yet. So I unplugged it. So let me go grab the upper door so we can get that put on. Lower door we can go ahead and shut and latch. I don't see anything else I need to do back here except for somehow magically when I brought this cabinet into the house even though I vacuumed it there is a piece of wood a white aluminum nail for exterior siding which who knows where that came from and then a screw so Looks to be all that's in the bottom there. Yep, everything looks clean. They must have just been behind something and slid out. So let's latch this bottom door real quick. I'm going to go grab the upper door. We have to put the lock on. I believe I have the original lock for it. Okay, <clears throat> I got this upper back door. Got to put the lock on it. I have the original lock. I believe it's the original lock. Um, and that paper I had, we had printed, I just kind of stuck it to the back of the, the um, upper door like it's supposed to be. Obviously, it's not the right size, but now this is the lock here. I don't know if this is original or not, but we're going to use it. I have two locks, actually. Let me grab the other one. The 
so this game, now I know what it was. It was labeled here. It was a Crime Fighters is what it was before. I sold the PCB on eBay because it's nothing I was interested in. But this was definitely on the back door because there's some black spray paint on it. Somebody had spray painted the back door. Actually, it could have been a coin door now that I think about it. So what I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of these locks on the back. And then I'll use my barrel lock on the front that matches all the other games down here. And then I'll just take and hang the key in the cabinet for the back door. So it's these gold keys here. This lock, I'm just going to put the key with this lock and save it. This can get cleaned off with lacquer thinner, but for now, we'll just use the other one. So now I have this metal plate here that has to get mounted to the back of the door. I don't know where the camera's viewing yet. Okay, so I have to mount this plate to the back of the door. And there's three screws that go in there. Just like that. So let me find the screws for those. I think they're just quarter inch head screws. Pretty much all Williams uses. So it's these right here. Make sure they're not too long. See, that one looks long to me. Let's see here. Yeah, I'm going to use these Phillips screws because they're shorter. And I don't want them to go through the door because the doors on these are only a half inch thick. So we're going to use these three Phillips screws here. These things are full of uh, crushed walnut shells from when I ran the tumbler. Nice thing about the floors I put in down here, they're uh, commercial grade vinyl and they're glued to the concrete so that I didn't have to worry about them buckling from being a floating floor from the weight of the games. And the nice thing is, is I actually dropped solder on the floor down here and it hit the floor and it comes right off the floor. It didn't even stick to the vinyl, it didn't even do any damage to the vinyl. So the nice thing is I could just vacuum this after I'm done building a game, mop it, and I'm good to go. Don't have to worry about staining up carpet or ripping carpet trying to move games around or anything like that it's a little colder you know because it's glued right to the concrete but you know i plan on probably getting some area rugs some runner rugs that kind of run down the between the games eventually and i'll probably get them black light reflective rugs so that um when the blue lights are on down here they, they'll actually glow and i can just order a big piece of carpet and cut it and have it uh, bound into rugs because you can order that stuff by the uh, 12 foot roll, wide roll, by whatever length you want. But that's in the future. That's not anytime soon. I need to get the rest of the games down here, see exactly how I want to set it up. Because I'm still not sure if the way it's set up is the way it's going to stay. Probably not. Because literally, you know, finishing this basement the day of the party was hard enough. Okay, let's put this lock cylinder in here. Just gonna hand tighten this. It's not gonna go anywhere. Well, 
This has a pretty good bend to it. I'm going to use the other one because it's straighter. Might have to bend it a little bit to latch. size screw it is so this screw is smaller which goes to that cylinder so we need to take this bigger screw for this one the latch looks like it fits doesn't it maybe not yeah I think it does okay I don't know that that's going to hang well enough. You know what? Pretty positive these games have a metal bracket that that latches into. Let me check and see. Yep, here it is right here. So this has got to get mounted up here to the wood. And I honestly don't remember which way it goes. I think it goes that way. So I gotta grab my two screws. Center. Yes, it is. Wrong hole. I need to open that back bottom door up again. There was one screw missing on that PCB. I have to put that on. Okay, that should be the right direction. I believe that is. So let me uh, open this bottom door again real quick and we'll put this other screw on that I forgot to put on the PCB. I saw it sitting on the floor and realized that I had missed one. I like to try to get all the hardware back where it goes. It's just kind of nice. You just throw this on real quick. Actually, I'm missing two screws. Got another one over here. There we go. I have some extra ones. Okay, now they're all in. Those screws that hold the board in act as a ground because they touch the ground bar on the on the um, board, and then when the screw goes through it, you know, it mounts it to that metal plate. Okay, that's done. Now I know that these are the gold key. Let's see if this works. Okay, it's hitting the metal. Okay, now, um, you can't go this way with the key. It hits the metal bar. It's got to go to the other way. Okay, so it does fit. It's loose though. Can't have it loose because if it's loose, it's not going to push in on that interlock switch. So what we need to do is open this up and I need to bend that bar, lock bar, that way towards the piece of wood. It's still a little tighter, still a little loose. Let's go a little bit more. There we go. Now we're good. You can see originally somebody 
put screws up there. That happens all the time. So basically we are done, I believe, with the back of this cabinet. So I'm gonna clean up here a little bit. I'm gonna get the cabinet kind of, I'm just gonna leave it here. We'll go around the other way and work on the uh, coin door. We gotta do a bunch of soldering. I need to get an extension cord, bring the soldering iron over there, and then we'll get that coin door mounted and all the wires soldered onto that. And then we're gonna fire the game up and see what happens. Um, I'm gonna take these keys off this key ring and put them and we'll put them in the front so i'll be back here shortly okay before i um <clears throat> do the coin door i'm going to take the screen out put that uh plastic bezel in there and then um we can move on to the coin door now on the coin door i did not have the um flaps for the coin returns um i found i dug through a bunch of extra coin door parts and i found a pair and they fit they're metal just like the originals so we're good to go with that um so let's get this screen off real quick i only have one side of this latched now the only thing i'm probably not going to do on camera today is this i haven't put the team molding on yet which you know, there's a million youtube videos on putting team molding on so i'll probably just do that afterwards So let's uh, pull this screen out. And this is a glass screen. Um, I believe it came from Phoenix Arcade. If I remember correctly. So now we need to put this plastic bezel in here. Just uh, make sure the dust is off of it here. It's been sitting a while, so it's a little dusty. So basically, we just need to get this in here. We got to put some screws in it. These are kind of a pain in the butt to get in here. You gotta kind of bend them in there. I don't know why they made it like that. The monitor does have a little screen burn from uh, Crime Fighters, but I mean, it's the original monitor to the game. It's not horrible. Obviously, it's a little bit more visible when there is a uh, light shining right on it. But once the tinted uh, glass screen goes back on, it'll pretty much hide it. Still might have to adjust the monitor a little bit because obviously I did it out of the cabinet and when I did it out of the cabinet it didn't have a tinted piece of glass in front of it so it might be a little dim I might have to turn the brightness up a little bit again make sure the dust is off of this I cleaned it before just want to make sure Thank you. 
Sorry. Okay, let me get set up here for the coin door. Okay, let's put the um, coin chutes and stuff in first. Actually, I had to go grab a uh, another 25 cent thing. I don't know if I have any newer ones of these too. Let me go look and see what I have. Okay, I did not have any more of these, but I do have some of these. These ones aren't as long as what they are supposed to be but we should be able to get them in there. A little wide, but I think once I clip this on, should work okay. Looks like I'm going to have to glue this on here because it's missing one of the pins to clip it on. So let me go get some super glue and glue this real quick. And then I will be back again. Okay, now we can start putting these together. doesn't matter right now. Plastic part really doesn't matter yet either. So I'm going to go ahead and get all four of these put in and then we can work on putting the back on here. So basically, um, The bottom part you have to put the door on first so the door goes on like this and then you have to mount it up underneath if you forget to put the door on you have to take it back apart i'll screw this one in real quick and then i'll do the other two off camera like to check to make sure it's not bound up. All right, I'll get the other two in. Okay, before I put the metal back plate on, I'm going to put the coin door onto the cabinet so that it's a little bit lighter, a little bit easier to work with. And these little screws are a pain in the butt.
I don't tighten them all the way until I get all four started. One more. Probably should be using needle nose pliers, probably be a little bit easier. This one's a pain in the butt. Uh, wasting a bunch of time here trying to get one screw in. Oh, light's dying. There's no battery for that in a minute. Okay, so what I had to do is yank the door out a little bit to get it to line up the hole. Now I can tighten them. Alright, let me go get a new battery for the light. And then we'll put that backing plate on the coin door. All right, let's get the coin door backing plate on. It has a cleat down here that this bottom metal goes into, and then there's two nuts that go up here to hold it. locking nuts. I'm actually going to leave this one out because i got to use this clamp. Well, no, I'd be all right. Just make sure this is going to shut. Okay, it's going to shut. All right, so now these are... That's my connector right there. These are all my wires I need to solder in place of these wires. So I'm not gonna sit here on camera and show all of that because it's gonna take a little bit of time. This is the old plug. I like to save these because you never know if you need it again or not. But um, 
This has more pins in it than this one does, but it's not a big deal because it matches the harness. So what I need to do now is take all these wires. Actually, I need to put this on first. This is my um, test switches. And when I cut this off the other cabinet, I left the uh, wires just a tiny bit on the test switches so I know which color goes where, just to save me some time. And you know what I forgot to do? Put these in. So now I gotta take it back apart, but let me get this on first, which is not a big deal to take apart. Only take a second, it's only those two nuts at the top. I have to put those plastic inserts in there and the springs. I also have to change the light bulbs too because I'm sure one's missing and I'm sure the other one's probably burned out. So I need to slide these in. Grab my two springs. Those slide onto those little plastic nipples. I dropped one. Went right in the coin return. This is obviously easier to do on the floor or on a table than when it's up in place. All right, now I got these in. I'm gonna um, work on soldering all these on. I'm not gonna video that because it's gonna take a little bit of time, but you guys get the idea of what I'm gonna do as far as take all these wires, unsolder one at a time off of here, and then replace them with the new wires. And then I'll come back and show you what that looks like. Okay, everything is wired up. It is all zip tied like it should be. So it's all running nice and neat along there. Um, Let's go ahead and fire it up. Moment of truth here. I'm going to turn these lights off. At least some of them. All right. We 
guess I'll turn all these lights off. All right, it's a little dark for a second here. If I can reach the power stick, there we go. All right, our coin door lights are working. Still got to put the lock in, but that's not a big deal. All right, let's let that warm up because that screen looks definitely pink at first. The red's definitely uh, really bright, and then it seems to uh, whiten up as it warms up. All right, let's hit a, um, a one-player game here. Check the joystick, make sure it's working all every which way. <laughs> Feels like it's working good. Seems like it's going every which way. Ah, I hit it. can't hit the bottom of the sponge. I have it set for four player, or not four player, uh, four lives. All right, it appears to be working. Just put AAA in there for now. Okay, um, let's try the two player button. I'm to kill myself. Player two, make sure that's all working right. Yeah, joystick feels really good. And you can go all the way up and down and it doesn't screw up at all. So, definitely, uh, I definitely think something's wrong with Sinistar. I'm going to open it back up and take a better look at it and see if maybe, uh, it has something to do with, uh, who knows, it could be a wire touching something, you know. Ah. All right, I'm going to let that just kind of die out. I'm going to turn the lights back on. Uh, monitor looks really good. I'm definitely happy with it. I don't think I'm going to mess with it at all. Um, So our coin door lights are working. I just have to put the locks on, T-molding, and pretty much this project is done, guys. I'll have to do some playthrough videos on some of these games. Um, I just haven't had a ton of time to do that, but I'll definitely have to do some playthroughs. Um, but hopefully you guys uh, like this series of doing the bubbles restore. Um, side art turned out really nice. Kind of hard to see where it's sitting right now, but... Um, other than that, guys, that's going to end this. This is part 15, the final part. Next, we're going to get into um, Paperboy. I want to get Paperboy done. So that's going to be the next uh, restore. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching. If you like what you're seeing, please like, subscribe. Any comments or questions, feel free to ask. Other than that, I will see you guys later.